I'm going to read from a memo prepared by the CIA and sent to the Department of Justice on December 30, 2004. The cover letter of the memo reads, Dan, a general description of the process, thank you. <clears throat> the purpose of interrogation is to persuade high-value detainees, HVD, to provide threat information and terrorist intelligence in a timely manner to allow the U.S. government to identify and disrupt terrorist plots. Here, several words are redacted. And to collect critical intelligence on al-Qaeda. Here, several lines are redacted. Effective interrogation is based on the concept of using both physical and psychological pressures in a comprehensive, systematic, and cumulative manner to influence HVD behavior to overcome a detainee's resistance posture. The goal of interrogation is to create a state of learned helplessness and dependence, conducive to the collection of intelligence in a predictable, reliable, and sustainable manner. For the purpose of this paper, the interrogation process can be broken into three separate phases, initial conditions, transition to interrogation, and interrogation. A, initial conditions, capture, here several words are redacted, contribute to the physical and psychological condition of the HVD prior to the start of interrogation. Of these, capture shock and detainee reactions, redacted, are factors that may vary significantly between detainees. Here three lines are redacted. Regardless of their previous environment and experiences, once an HVD is turned over to CIA, a predictable set of events occur. One, rendition. The HVD is flown to a black site, redacted. A medical examination is conducted prior to the flight. During the flight, the detainee is securely shackled and is deprived of light and sound through the use of blindfolds, earmuffs, and hoods. Here, one line is redacted. There is no interaction with the HVD during this rendition movement, except for periodic, discrete assessments by the onboard medical officer. B, upon arrival at the destination airfield, the HVD is moved to the black site under the same conditions and using appropriate security procedures. Two, reception at black site. The HVD is subjected to administrative procedures and medical assessment upon arrival at the black site. Five lines are redacted. The HVD finds himself in the complete control of Americans. Six lines are redacted. The procedures he is subjected to are precise, quiet, and almost clinical, and no one is mistreating him. While each HVD is different, the rendition and reception process generally creates significant apprehension in the HVD because of the enormity and suddenness of the change in environment, the uncertainty about what will happen next, and the potential dread an HVD might have of US custody. Reception procedures include, A, the HVD's head and face are shaved, B, a series of photographs are taken of the HVD while nude to document the physical condition of the HVD upon arrival. C, a medical officer interviews the HVD and a medical evaluation is conducted to assess the physical condition of the HVD. The medical officer also determines if there are any contraindications to the use of interrogation techniques. D, a psychologist interviews the HVD to assess his mental state. The psychologist also determines if there are any contraindications to the use of interrogation techniques. Transitioning the interrogation, the initial interview. Interrogators use the initial interview to assess the initial resistance posture of the HVD and to determine in a relatively benign environment if the HVD intends to willingly participate with CIA interrogators. 
The standard on participation is set very high during the initial interview. The HVD would have to willingly provide information on actionable threats and location information on high value targets at large, not lower level information, for interrogators to continue with the neutral approach. The rest of the page is redacted. <laughs> 